In this video, we want to talk about the concept of diversification. We want to do that using the previously introduced case study on Daimler's portfolio management problem. Now that mean variance case study has revealed that every portfolio of the in total 280,000 Daimler employees will only be exposed to systematic risk. Now let's pose the following question. How large is the amount of systematic risk if we were to assume that the tangency portfolio consists of 100 assets that each have a 50% volatility and a 0.4 correlation with all the other assets? Now let's answer this question with the help of the equal weight portfolio. While that portfolio is not exactly equal to the tangency portfolio, it comes close to it, especially for large portfolios. And more importantly, the intuition that it allows us to draw does also hold for the tangency portfolio. So let's start. The variance of a portfolio's holding period return, sigma square p, equals the following expression, where WP is the column vector of portfolio weights and capital Sigma is the covariance matrix of asset returns. Now let's assume we work with an equal weight portfolio. So WP equals 1 divided by capital N, where capital N is the number of investable assets. The variance of the holding period return of that equal weight portfolio equals the following expression. Notice there are n variance terms in capital sigma and n times n minus 1 covariance terms. We therefore define the average value of all individual variances as sigma upper bar to the power of 2. And we define the average pairwise correlation term as the covariance upper bar, which equals the following expression. Now that allows us to re-express the variance of the holding period return of the equal weight portfolio as the following expression here. Now that last expression allows us to extract four takeaways about the power and the causes of diversification. So first, if the average correlation among assets is zero, the covariance upper bar term vanishes and portfolio risk converges to zero as we increase the number of assets in the portfolio. Said differently, the power of diversification is indeed limitless if asset returns are on average uncorrelated. Such a setup would arise if all assets are only exposed to asset-specific risk. Now let's go to the second takeaway. In the more relevant environment of positive asset correlations, portfolio risk converges to the average covariance term. This says that systematic risk of a large portfolio captures the common co-movement among all the constituents of that portfolio. I want to highlight for future reference that the reason for the common co-movement is that different firms and investment opportunities have common exposure to a small set of economy-wide macroeconomic risk factors. Th the third takeaway. The strength of the diversification benefit depends of course on the number of assets in the portfolio. But more importantly, it depends on the pairwise correlation. 
So assume all assets of the equal weight portfolio shared the same volatility sigma and the same pairwise correlation coefficient rho. The variance of the portfolio's holding period return would therefore coincide with the following expression. Sigma square p is sigma square divided by n plus n minus 1 over n times rho times sigma square. Now that additional simplification allows us to uncover three additional learning points. Number A. Portfolio risk approaches zero as we increase the number of assets if none of the assets co-moves with the other assets. Now that again highlights the unlimited power of diversification for assets that share no common risk. B. More generally speaking, portfolio risk converges to rho times sigma square as we increase the number of assets in the equal weight portfolio. That teaches us that systematic risk is indeed the portion of an individual security's unpredictable return movements that systematically co-moves with the unpredictable return movements of the other assets in the portfolio. The last argument also shows that portfolio risk falls if the correlation coefficient rho falls. In fact, adding an asset with a zero correlation to an existing well-diversified portfolio does not change the volatility of that portfolio. Portfolio risk even falls if that new asset has a new correlation, has a negative correlation with the well-diversified portfolio. And C, as the correlation approaches 1, gains from diversification disappear. And such a setting arises if all of an asset's risk is systematic. So by now, it has been quite clear that the magic of diversification is mainly constrained by the magnitude of the correlation coefficient. I want to give you a numerical example to support that claim further. Now, for a 100 asset equal weight portfolio with an average asset volatility of 50%, and an average pairwise correlation of 40%, the amount of systematic risk equals 31.8%. Interestingly, as one doubles the number of assets to 200, systematic risk drops, but it only drops by an absolute amount of 0.1%, which practically speaking is just nothing. But humor aside, that example teaches us that you cannot diversify a portfolio any further by simply adding more assets to an already well diversified portfolio. What you really need is to reduce the average pairwise correlation of all the assets in the portfolio. Now let me visualize that last thought. Imagine the same setup than previously, but now the average correlation among assets is assumed to be zero. In that case, the amount of systematic risk for a 100 asset equal weight portfolio would drop to 5%. And that brings me to the fourth learning point. As smart investors hold only diversified portfolios on the efficient frontier, the riskiness 
of a single security is not its standalone return variance, but its covariance with the other assets in the portfolio. You can, have, you can add a hedge asset with a large idiosyncratic variance to a well-diversified portfolio and you would see that portfolio risk falls. Hence, it's of utter importance to appreciate the total risk of any investable project has a diversifiable part and a non-diversifiable part. And there are usually three ways to express that important risk decomposition of single assets. And I'm reproducing them here. One way is to say that total risk of an asset is the sum of diversifiable risk and undiversifiable risk. Others say that the total risk of an asset is asset-specific risk plus common risk. And in other occasions, you might hear that total risk of an asset is the sum of idiosyncratic risk and systematic risk. Got feedback? We would love to hear it. Please drop us a line. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.